Hey guys, I'm Shah Rukh Sharif from Nukta Arts and today I'm going to be teaching you a very simple method to bring life into your dull photos. So without wasting any time, let's get into it. Alright, so this is the photo that we'll be working on today. And this photo has been shot by my brother, Dani Sharif, the other half of Nukta Arts. And whenever we're taking photos, we always try to tell a story through it. So as for this photo, this was that this kid right here, at an age that he should be going to school, he's out here at a shop selling drinks and other items just to earn his living. So the entire edit that we're going to be doing today is going to focus on bringing out the emotions and the feelings through his eyes and his surroundings. And uh, this photo was shot on a flat profile. So what that basically means is that we tell the camera to keep the noise reduction, the saturation, the sharpening, the contrast all at zero. And the reason for this is that we want manual control over all of these parameters whenever we're editing. So at a glance, you might think that this photo is blurred, but that's not the case. It'll become a lot better and even clearer when we're done editing this photo. And uh, also for the sake of this tutorial, I'll be using a JPEG format file rather than a RAW file. Please note that RAW is always the way to go whenever you're shooting and editing because it gives you so much control over all of the single parameters that a, a regular JPEG cannot do. But the reason that I'm using a JPEG today is that not many people know about the RAW format. And JPEG is widely available in all cameras, whether it be a point and shoot, a phone, or, a, or even a DSLR, a lot of people will shoot at JPEG rather than RAW. And uh, I will be making a future tutorial on how to handle RAW files for image editing. But for now, we're working with a JPEG file. All right, so let's get started with the tutorial. I'll be working with a non-destructive approach. And what that would mean is that I will not be touching this background there. Instead, I'll duplicate it using Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac. And uh, we're going to be using Adobe's Camera Raw plugin to do all of our editing. So there's two ways to access the plugin. You can go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, or you can use the shortcut, which is Control Shift A on a Mac, uh, on a Windows, sorry, and Command Shift A on a Mac. So as soon as you open up Camera Raw, this is what you will see. Don't worry about all of these tab groups. I will be only using a few of them for this tutorial, but we will get into um, a lot more in the upcoming tutorials. So we're going to be uh, doing 90% of our first step, which is the color correction in this tab, the basics tab. So all of those parameters that I was talking about that we told the camera to set to zero, we have control right here. The contrast, the exposure, highlights, shadows, everything we can tweak right here to make this photo a whole lot better. I usually start my edits with the highlights and shadows, but I can already see that this photo has a lot of grays and we need to turn the grays down a bit to work on this photo. Otherwise, if I pull this down or pull this up, nothing's going to happen. So we're going to work, start our work with dehaze and dehaze, just like its name, it removes the haze or adds the haze. So if you push it back, your photo becomes hazy. If you push it up, you remove the haze. So I'm going to leave it right here and you can go back and forth through the before and after by tapping the P key. So this was the before and this is the after and right off the bat, you can see that all of the grays that were over here have now become proper uh, tones of black or are going towards proper tones of black. And this gives us a lot more room to work with now. So I'm going to uh, make my way up to the highlights and I always try to turn the highlights down. And that is because what the highlights do is that wherever there is light in the shot, like right over here, the whites, they'll become more prominent and you can see the details of the white. And as for the shadows, I like to bring them up because all these details are always hidden and I want to show these details. So I'm going to bring this up a bit. Well, not a bit. I'm going to bring it up quite amount. Yeah. All right. So now you don't see any major change. Right, our image still looks a bit dull, low contrast the image. 
So now I'm going to push the blacks down and add some of that contrast in. That looks good. But now our image is too dark. So we pulled the highlights down. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to add some whites and whites. What that will do is all of the highlights that were in the image, we're bringing them out rather than destroying the detail in it. Because if I just pull this up, this will do the same thing, but it won't affect all the all the areas where the white is. So I'll put this back into place. This looks good. And I'm going to bring the whites up. And right there, you can see our photo coming together. So this was what we started off with. This is where we're at. And you can see the histogram as well. This looks a bit compact and everything is all scrunched up together. But as soon as we open up these values, it spreads out and gives us a wider color range to work with. Now, um, you might say that we're done with the color correction, but that's not the case. You see, I like these details. I like these colors in the bottles and in the area behind him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the vibrance a bit. Not too much. Uh, I think this is good. But now it looks a bit too artificial. So I usually tend to pull down the saturation to complement to complement the vibrance. So now we were here. Now we're here a whole lot better, but still a long way to go. And uh, that's it for our basics tab. So 90% of our work now is done with the color correction. So we're going to move over to the details tab and the details, just like the first thing, it sharpens the image. So if this were a raw image, I would usually go around 80 to 100. But since it's JPEG, I can't push it that much. Otherwise, we're going to get artifacts. So I'll keep it around this number. And uh, for this image right here, I'm not going to be messing with the radius or the details, but I will be doing the masking. And what masking is basically is we're going to hold down the alt or option key if you're on a Mac and I'm going to drag it across. Now, wherever there is white, the mask will apply where there is black. It won't mess with it. So we're going to keep it right about here. And what that will do is if I zoom into his eyes, I'm going to turn it off. You can see that the eyes are a bit blur, but as soon as I turn it on, the eyes become a, whole, a lot more in focus without the effect with the effect. So this, although it looks like a minor thing, but it plays a very important part in our photo. And that's it for color correction. We're going to press OK. And boom, our image has been color corrected. So we went from this to this. Now, uh, if you want, you can stop right here because this looks like a pretty good presentable image. You can show it off to anyone, but uh, we're going to be working more on it and start to color grade it properly. So for that, we're going to duplicate this layer again. Control J if you're on Windows, Command J if you're on a Mac, and we're going to open up Camera Raw again. Control Shift A or Command Shift A. Now, what I want to do is that all these areas where there's the bright color, like the bucket, the items in the back, I want to mute them. Like I don't want to take out the color, but I want to desaturate it a bit. So there's many ways of doing this. And I can even create my own uh, preset on this, my own settings, but I'll be working with the built-in camera raw presets for black and white. And you can, you're free to make your own if you feel like it. But for this particular image, uh, these presets do a pretty decent job. So what I'm looking for over here is that I want the focus to be on this kid's face and his body. I want this to stay white, but I want the rest of the image to be a bit dark so I can play with it. And it'll help me uh, bring down these colors when I'm editing it. So, um, see, this is a bit too dark right here and we don't want that because this face is blown out. So I think this one, number six, it does the job for me. Um, any of these presets could be doing the job for you on your particular image. But for my image, this one does the job and I'm going to double click it and I'm going to press OK. And now our whole photo is black and white, but we don't want a black and white photo, do we? We want a photo that's in color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the blending options right over here and I'm going to bring it to darker color. 
And now you may be thinking like, oh my god, our, photos our photo is garbage. That's not the case. We're going to bring the opacity down. I think this is a good amount for me. So now what this, what this did is, if I turn it off, you can see that all of this had too much color. It was, although it is looking good, but it was distracting the focus from this kid right over here. So if you turn it on, you can see that all of the color has been muted in the background, in the door, in the bucket, the bottles, everything. The only thing that didn't get affected was this kid's face. And that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted the face not to get affected because that's the main part of our image that shows the emotions this kid is going through of wanting to go to school, but he's here at a shop selling things to make his living. All right, so we're about 80% done with our edit now. We were here when we started and now we're over here. A much better photo and now we're starting to set the theme and the mood and everything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stamp and copy these layers. And we can do that with Control alt e on a Windows or Command-Option-E on a Mac. And we'll create a copy of these layers. And guess what? We're going to open Camera Raw again. So you remember the shortcut, Control shift a or Command-Shift-A if you're on a Mac. And we open that up. All right. Now, we're going to add a proper grade. What a grade will do is that so far we've color corrected the image. All right, and then the black and white was we set a tone to the image. We wanted a muted, moody theme. So that's what we did with the black and white image. But now we're going to grade the image. We're going to add some shades of blue, yellow, and green to, to give it a proper color grade. And for that, we're going to navigate to the color grading tab right over here. And we have these three wheels. So we got the highlights, the shadows, and the midtones. So uh, I want this to have a yellow and blue tint but i want the midtones to bring up the green in this because i like the the clothes that he's wearing and i think the green would complement it a lot better so i'm gonna pull this tab right over here to a good amount of yellow and i think this looks good right here now i want to add some black uh, to blues i want to add some blues to the shadow so I'm going to pull this right down here. And I think this looks good. So this is our before and after. So now we set a tone to it. But I'm not done. Like I said, I want to add some greens. Not too much. Just a slight touch of green in the midtones. Right here. And I think that looks pretty good. So now... Our image has a tone to it where we are done with a grade. We're not done exactly, but we've set up a grade to work with it. But I want to add, I think I can lift up the whites a little bit more over here. So I'm going to head up to the basics tab and I'm going to drag the whites across to bring it to a suitable amount. I think this looks good. Yeah, there you go. All right. Two more steps left. So we added the grade, we lifted the whites. Now I want to bring down the highlights a little bit of these areas. So I'm going to go into the curves and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this highlights area. So if I pull it all the way down, it's going to become dark. If I pull it across, it's going to get blown out. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit down. Like I think this works fine. This looks good to me. So we were here when we started with the color grading and now we're here. And the last thing that I want to do is I want to add a spot focus on this kid right here. So we're going to do that by adding a vignette. We'll go to the effects tab and right here we see vignette. I'm going to push it down because if I go like this, it's going to add a white vignette and over here, we're going to get a black one. So I think this looks good. And we're going to press OK. So there you have it. We went from this flat profile gray dull image to this impactful image that tells the story of this kid. We can see the emotions that this kid is going through 
at this point that he's seeing other kids go to school wearing their uniforms and stuff and he's here selling drinks and other items just to make his living and uh, well that that helps him tell his story so there you have it this was our tutorial on how to get from this stage to this stage so that's it for this video if you enjoyed please don't forget to like share and comment also if you haven't already done so hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon to be notified of all our upcoming videos and our tutorials. If you have any requests or suggestions, don't forget to drop them in the comments. You can also contact us on our Instagram and our Twitter. All the links are in the description and on your screens. That's it for today. Later guys.